Hi there, Evan here with Crypto and Markets for Thursday, September 7th, 2017 with a quick little video here on what happened last night in China. I saw a report in the uh, Financial Times that was posted about four, four or so hours ago. China, China's fifth largest bank, the uh, Bank of Communications, has debt downgraded for Moody's. Now, what do we know in regards to this? In China itself, there has been massive overbuilding, i.e., they've built in these big cities all these big high rise buildings where half of the units remain unoccupied. And why, why, was, why was the debt downgraded? downgraded? Again, we know that, that a lot of this debt that was taken out for a lot of these uh, properties, effectively. The loans have been defaulted on. They haven't been paid for. And then, consequently, like any other banking situation, the debt that the Bank of Communications owns is worth a lot less now. In the sense that people bought these buildings up basically with fraudulent... Well, here's basically what happened. The, the loans that were taken out for these properties were built on fraudulent pretenses. Meaning a lot of these loans that went into these um, loans for the properties in China, they were taken out with the purposes of the person who took on the loan effectively defaulting on the debt. And that's what you're seeing now. In fact, look at the credit growth in China. In March, it turned negative. In March, six months ago. I mean, it's quite amazing, too, how Moody's is just jumping on this now. I mean, look at my channel. I've been on this since really it started. I mean, this is a big problem. People bought up homes with fraudulent loans. In every housing bubble, that's a characteristic we always see. I mean, it's not even just Chinese loans. Um, look at the ultra-high-end real estate around the world. From London to New York... To San Francisco, to Sydney, to Melbourne. I mean, even the even the, the three million plus market in uh, Vancouver. I mean, as always, do go ahead and watch uh, Steve Suretsky's uh, YouTube channel. He has a lot of great info on this. Look at the high end detached market, even in Vancouver. That was bought up a lot by Chinese buyers who took out these loans, and look what's happening there. I mean, ultimately, around the world, do I think China was the uh, only, only reason for this? No, of course not. But especially at the high end, there were a contributing factor. I mean, I don't think you can ignore th you can ignore this, right? Now for how to go ahead and play this. Zero Hedge actually had a great chart in this a few months ago. I will leave a link to to, to it in the description down below. Sorry. It basically shows that the Chinese credits, um, credit growth leads the copper market by about six months. Now that started turning down in March, February, March time frame. Actually, I shouldn't say six months, six to nine months, sorry. Now that started turning down at the beginning of the year. And six to nine months puts you about right now. So how do I play this? JJC, the copper ETF, I would go ahead and put on a short position right here. Because I do think for the next six to nine months, copper is going to trend lower. I mean, look at the copper overnight on this. It fell 2%. I think there's more to come. So basically, to go ahead and put it in context, what happened with Bank of Communications in China is only the tip of the iceberg. People took out fraudulent loans to, to take out properties that were never going to be occupied. And that cycle, vicious cycle, of trying to create artificial wealth is over. JJC, the copper ETF, based on leading indicators, is now a short. That's all I really got to state for this video. If you like what you heard, hit that like button. 
And if you're watching on VidMe, hit the upvote. Let's get it trending, everybody. Anyhow, follow and or subscribe to my channel for more reports like this one. Have a wonderful day, everybody.